Jason here, and we're going to go over installing a blinking light win for an original Nintendo entertainment system. Um, for those of you who are not aware, blinking light win is, or was, a Kickstarter program um, that turned into an actual product. And essentially what it is, is it's a replacement connector for the original Nintendo. And it is also a replacement tray for... Um, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. So the idea is that you're going to actually mod your Nintendo with this plastic tray that it comes with and then also add in this connector here. And the idea is that um, when the original Nintendo was created, it was created so that it would mimic uh, a VCR for um, the United States. And because of that, when you would put a cartridge in there, you would then push it down and it would click down in like this. And the problem with that design is that when you push it in there and then push it down, it actually bends the pins or the connector that's way in the back there. And so after a while, when you bend those pins, it keeps it from having a good contact with the cartridge. And eventually you have issues with it not being able to load the game or not being able to read it. So the, uh, the Blinking Light Win by Arcade Works is uh, actually their resolution to this issue. And um, just to kind of get this out of the way, this video is in no way sponsored by Arcade Works and this product. Um, I purchased this um, with my own money and uh, just wanted a new way of being able to get my games to work in my old Nintendos without having to worry about pressing them down all the time. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to get this installed, we're going to walk through it, and then uh, later in a future video I'm going to go ahead and do a review on uh, how it works once I've had some time to, to actually spend with it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to get into this old console here. And to do that, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to have screws on the back. And so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this thing apart. Uh, to get to these screws, you're going to want a small Phillips head screwdriver, just like this. And so you're just going to go in each one of these holes here on the back of it, and just press down really tight while you're turning. That way, you make sure that you don't strip out any of these screws. You don't want to strip out these screws because then that would, uh, you know, cause some major issues. So I'm just going to go through and take all of these off. All right, now that we've got all of the screws loosened up, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up on this and just uh, pull it up and out. And we're going to slide the top end out of the way. And I'm just going to just flip it over and just let all of those screws kind of fall out. Make sure that you grab all of them. You don't want to lose any of these. So there should be six screws in total. And uh, then we're left with our console here. Um, after we get the top plastic cover off, the next thing that we want to do is we want to take off this um, RF shield right here. And um, there's a couple screws for this. You're going to have uh, three on this side. You're going to have two around the back and then two on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and get those off now as well. And uh, these are different size screws, I believe, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong about that. But uh, um, I don't know. Maybe they are the same. I'm going to keep them separate anyway, just in case. All right. So once we got all of our screws off of the uh, outside of this, um, RF shield, we're going to just go ahead and we're going to just lift it off and we're just going to put that to the side. This is actually the tray that we're wanting to replace here. And as you can see, this is the tray that um, basically allows you to push the cartridge in and then down into it. So we want to go ahead and we want to get this off. Um, there's going to be, I believe it is three screws on each side. You want to make note of the silver screws right over here. Um, there's going to be one on each side in the same spot and then one over here. Um, you want to make note, these are different than the other uh, kind of gold colored screws or brass colored screws, so you want to make sure that um, you make note of the placement of those and make sure that you put those back in the correct place um, when you do go to put this thing back together.
once we get those screws off, then it's just a matter of pulling this thing out. Let's see. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. So you want to just be really careful. You just lift up the front end a little bit and then just kind of wiggle it back and forth until you pull it out and then the, the whole tray will come out like this. I'm gonna set that over to the side. And then um, also this connector right here needs to come out. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this thing out too. All right, before we do that though, I did miss one screw. Um, we want to go ahead and take off this screw in the back right here. Get that out of there. Then we can lift up the board. Um, basically what we want to do is we want to um, pick this up and just this this uh, connector right here just slides right off and just pull that out. All right, and then just stick that over here. All right, now that we've got our Nintendo apart, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this thing installed. So we're just going to open this up. This is the uh, packaging that the blinking light wind comes in. And let's just go ahead and take a look at what we got here. We've got the tray, um, we've got some instructions, right. so we've got the replacement tray, as you can see there's no, no spring action on this one, the cart just slides straight in, doesn't push down anymore, and then here's our new connector, and this is actually the newer re-engineered connector by Arcade Works, so this is, uh, this is the second revision to the connector that they had. And they also give you a sticker that you can put on the console to remind those not to press down on that. So um, what we're going to do is now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this thing installed. The first thing we want to do is we want to put the connector on the board. And it's going to go this way. So you'll see that when you turn the connector to the side, the top connector is going to be larger or extend out a little further than the bottom connector. So we want to make sure that the bottom one or the shorter one goes on the bottom. So we're just going to stick that in there and just press this in. It's going to be a little snug getting this to go in. So gonna be careful not to injure the board or anything while you're putting that in. All right, go ahead. We're going to put this down. And then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put in my screw here in the back. This will keep my board down. make sure that my board is all the way in so make sure you press it right up against that um, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to install our tray on there oh. and I put it in backwards so we're going to basically there's two tabs in the back here those are going to slide down over top of the board so as you can see here it just slides right over top of it pretty simple stuff all right and that's all there is to it. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to put our um, screws back in. Um, the one thing that we uh, do not have to worry about anymore is the, uh, the silver screws that we had before. Um, we don't have to worry about the silver screws. As you can see, the original connector, actually I'm sorry, the back gold screws, the original connector had two holes in here for those screws. This one only has one, um, which you can see here. So we only need to put in the one silver screw on each side. We don't have to put in those other gold screws. So we're just going to make sure we stick the silver screws in. And we're going to tighten these down. Be careful not to over tighten when you're installing these screws, especially when you're installing them around the, the, uh, the, the board here. You don't want to install them so tight that you, you know, put so much pressure on actually crack the board. That would be, that would not be good. So. Make sure that you just just hand snug it. Don't get overly excited. We're putting these down in there. All right, and then the two.
two front screws. Most of these uh, brass screws are the same, so you don't have to be uh, real picky when you're putting your screws all back together. I like to do before I get everything back together the cover on and all of that the thing that I like to do is I like to test the system with a game in there make sure everything turns on and is working correctly before I put everything back on just in case you have a problem it'll make it much easier to um, you know to take stuff back off or work on it if you run into an issue so um, right now we're gonna go over we're gonna hook this thing up and just see if a game goes in there and works without any problems okay so we've got the uh, Nintendo with the blinking light win installed um, without the cover on at this point point. Um, we've got it hooked up to the TV so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna stick a cartridge in a cartridge in as you can see it just slides straight back now and clicks right in nice solid click there so that's nice and then uh, there's no pushing down now all we do is we just hit the power button and as you can see, the game starts right up, no problems, no blowing into the cartridge, no, you know, wiggling the cartridge back and forth. The cartridge is in there nice and sturdy with no issues. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, take this thing back off, put the cover back on, the RF shield, and then we should be good to go. All right, we've got the uh, RF shield back on. It's nice and tight. There is one, two three, four, five, six screws to put back on with this. You will have two extra screws when you're finished installing everything. Remember that the new connector, the blinking light wind connector, uses two less screws towards the back. So if you have two extra screws laying around at the end of all this, don't worry about it. That's how it's supposed to be. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick our cover back on. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put in just the uh, six screws to finish off. Um, once we get the six screws on, then we're going to plug the Nintendo back in, try a game just to make sure, and then that should be it. Alright, here we go. We've got the uh, Nintendo back together. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to try one more game um, just to make sure everything is working. And for this, I picked Karate Kid. There's a specific reason I picked this game. This game constantly gives me issues um, whenever I used it before. I don't know if it's the connection with the pins or whatever, but I'm constantly having to move it around, wiggle it to make it work. So I figure if the blinking light wind can resolve issues with this game, it can work with anything. So I'm just going to go ahead, we're going to flip up the lid here, and we're going to put the, the game in. Remember, just make sure it's snug back there. No pressing down. And look at that, first time. First time it starts up. So already I'm kind of a believer with this thing. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more testing, try a bunch more games. Um, I'm going to try some uh, non-standard or non-official Nintendo cartridges, see how it works. And then I'm going to give you guys my impressions in a separate review. But uh, this was installation of the Blinking Light Win. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.